Okay, you know how Republicans love to rage against censorship and cancel culture? Well, they don't actually walk it like they talk it. Take a look at what's happening in Texas. State Republicans led by Republican luminaries like Governor Greg Abbott, who can't even manage the state's electrical grid, forced the abrupt cancellation of a book event at a state history museum because they didn't like what the book says. Forget the Alamo examines the role slavery played leading up to the Battle of the Alamo. Now, naturally, the mere mention of slavery triggered the fragility of Republican leaders who just happened to be on the board of the museum. Now, Abbott didn't have the courage to publicly condemn free speech, but his deputy, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, carried the bag. In a tweet, Patrick said, I told staff to cancel this event as soon as I found out about it and called it a fact-free rewriting of Texas history. Just let that sink in. The lieutenant governor of Texas, an entire state, proudly announced that the Texas State History Museum was no place for history? Yeehaw. Join me now. Chris Tomlinson, columnist for the Houston Chronicle and co-author of Forget the Alamo, The Rise and Fall of an American Myth. And uh, I have to read your response uh, to Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan, uh, Dan Patrick, because actually I retweeted and commented on it and then literally like DM me and come on my show. That is uh, one of the reasons that you're here is I was like, I need to book you immediately. You wrote back, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick takes credit for oppressing free speech and policing thought in Texas. Bullock Museum prov proves it is a propaganda outlet. As for his fact-free comment, well, a dozen people, uh, professional historians disagree. And you, you hashtag, of course, forget the Alamo in Texas legislature. Please tell me the story of how your book event with your co-authors, Brian Burrow and Jason Stanford, got scheduled and then canceled. Well, the Bullock reached out to us as soon as they found out we were doing this book. Uh, we had spoken to their program manager months in advance. Uh, once we had the publication date of June 8th, we uh, talked to them again. They said, yes, we want you here. And we had a lot of demand for speaking, including one from the Writers League of Texas. So we thought, let's do a joint event. Let's let's get these two groups together. We're going to do it virtually anyway. And the Bullock said, OK, we'll supply the website. We'll register uh, the attendees and we'll make this happen. Uh, then a right wing extremist group called the Texas Public Policy Foundation starts tweeting about it. Uh, they are particularly incensed by the uh, content of our book. So um, we checked in with the Bullock and they were like, oh, yeah, no problem. We've we've done controversial stuff before. Besides, the Wall Street Journal had a SMU history professor talk about how great your book is. H.W. Uh, Brands, UT uh, history professor, he said, all this stuff about slavery, this is old news. The most interesting part is the modern part of our book. And then the lieutenant governor drops the hammer. He either calls up the um, bullet, uh, says, no, you've got to pull out. We get a call from our publisher. You know, this is off. Writers League of Texas says, oh, we can we can scramble. We can get you on a Zoom call. And we're like, no, there's not enough time. And um, and that's when I went to Twitter. And also a wise thing to do in this modern age, the thing to do is go public, go to Twitter. And so what is the status now? Are you going to be able to discuss your book? I know Texas has now put in this thing called the 1836 Project, creating a nine member committee to promote patriotic education, patriotic history. They basically want to limit the way that that that, that hurt historical events are taught. Essentially, they have to be taught in a way that. I guess, bigs up and, and sort of ha makes a hagiography of Texas history, not a real history. Are you going to be allowed to discuss this book in the state of Texas? Well, I mean, clearly, uh, I'm I'm standing in Texas. and I'm talking to you. Uh, we're hoping to do some uh, book events at uh, private bookstores. But I've got some real questions about how far this ban goes. Am I banned from state universities? Uh, the Texas Book Festival is held on state property every year. I'm on the board of advisors. Am I not going to be able to discuss my book there? Uh, I've got a lot of questions for uh, Governor Patrick. And um, we're talking to some attorneys who have some questions, too, about his uh, attitude towards the First Amendment. Right. The First Amendment is supposed to prevent government um, from pressuring I uh, Americans on the basis of their speech or intervening in, in the uh, the use of, of free speech. So that seems like a pretty straightforward case. Let's talk about your book itself. What is the premise of the book that is so terrifying to the old 1836 Project folks? Well, we make the argument that the myths that were taught to people my age and younger, frankly, in Texas schools 
are hurtful to the growing uh, plurality of Hispanics in Texas. Uh, it paints a picture of freedom-loving Anglos fighting against dark-skinned people for liberty. Uh, it completely ignores the role that slavery played in motivating this, uh, because we point out the inconvenient fact that uh, Mexico, as a multicultural uh, society that had just overthrown Spanish colonial rule, was trying to outlaw slavery. Uh, the President Santa Ana said before he crossed the border into Texas, I am going to go free the wretched souls held in bondage in Texas. And uh, to say those things in Texas is apparently um, was going to get you slapped down. Yeah, I mean, well, it's the same way that they don't like to talk about the fact that in the War of 1812, the British were offering freedom and land to any enslaved Africans who would join the Crown's fight against the Americans at the time, and that the British governor of Virginia was offering to completely free all the slaves through his own Emancipation Proclamation. We don't get that history either. And, and do you believe that at this point, the goal of the government of Texas is to suppress history because part of this 1836 law says they have to give deference to both sides. What would be the deference that one could give the other side in an argument where slavers and uh, slaveholders were fighting a war to hold on to their slaves? What 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 deference could you give to that in, in, as a journalist? What, what, how you, do uh, you know, I, I don't know. And, and that's the problem. This all grew out of a column I wrote about Texas needing to rebrand itself. If we cannot have the image of the long, tall, white cowboy uh, fighting and enslaving people of color as our brand anymore. But unfortunately, uh, conservatives, particularly um, you know Governor Abbott, Governor Patrick, their identity is caught up in this mythology. Uh, Governor Patrick has a collection of John Wayne memorabilia in his office to give you an idea of where his politics are. <laughs>